Okay, we're going to tie a fly called the Cased Caddis Lava. It's a fly developed by Rennie Harrop. I was first introduced to this fly on a VHS tape, so that tells you how long this fly pattern has been around. <laughs> Start with the uh, thread about a third of the way down the hook and uh, trap some copper wire that's going to become our rib. This is a little thicker wire than the pattern usually is tied with, uh, but I honestly couldn't find my thinner wire, so I'll make do. And uh, I'm wrapping down beyond the point of where the body would normally end so that I can get some wraps of wire down below the body to add a little additional weight to this fly. When we wrap the wire up, I'll be wrapping a few extra wraps up uh, in what is now the bare portion of the hook as well. I have some pheasant tail fibers I've trapped onto the hook and I'm only wrapping over them down to this point because that's where I actually want the body to start, not down where I ended the copper wire. And uh, having attached the wire rib and the body material, I'm going to build an underbody with some green dubbing. This green dubbing becomes the body of the worm sticking out of the case of the uh, uh, house or larva that uh, that the larva has built and uh, we're just dubbing this up to build up and thicken the body some because if we just wrap that pheasant tail up it would be much too narrow. Having built up an underbody I'm going to wrap back to the pheasant tail and get the thread right to the point where the pheasant tail comes off the hook. I'll make a few turns around my thread and then rotate my thread out so that it's uh, parallel with the hook. Twist it up a little bit and then bring it back down perpendicular to the hook and start wrapping my body. And I've got enough pheasant tail here perhaps to make it all the way, but I'm going to stop at this point and show you what, what you do if you run out of pheasant tail fibers. You can just go ahead and trip, trim off the uh, excess of the, the piece that was too short and bring in another set of fibers and trap them right to the top of the hook like you did the previous set. Make sure they're trapped down well. It's nice and secure. Come back to the same point that the pheasant tail fibers come off the hook shank few wraps around your thread, bring it out parallel, spin it up, and wrap the rest of the body. Pheasant tail fibers are a lot shorter than the uh, turkey tail fibers used in this fly. Uh, I've cut away to one I'm doing with a larger body and uh, have put more dubbing on here to make it thicker. And you can see these turkey tail fibers are a lot longer. And using the same rope technique of twisting the fibers around the tying thread, I can take and wrap this full length with these turkey tail fibers because they are longer than they do give you much the same look as the pheasant tail. Although I'm sure uh, Rennie Harrop wouldn't have made the change to uh, pheasant tail fibers if he didn't think it was an improvement. Uh, but whatever you have on hand, either one will work well for the fly. So having finished the case of the fly, I'm making a bunch of extra wraps here that will unwrap as I wrap my rib up. And some people say that they don't like to do this because they forget which way to wrap. And let me show you what happens if you forget which way to wrap, nothing happens. You just turn around and start wrapping the other way. And now as I wrap, my bobbin will unwind all that extra thread that was uh, wound up there will unwrap. My bobbin will drop down and my bobbin will be right there waiting for me when I get there with my wire. Uh, the only disadvantage I haven't showed you what happens when you wrap backwards is I got a kink here, but see if I can work this kink out. There you go. And you can see uh, the thread just unwraps as I wrap forward. I didn't have to bring my bobbin cradle into play or make any extra motions other than those few wraps. 
And when I get up here, I'm going to roll down onto the shank and make a few more extra wraps to weight this fly a little bit extra. And then just bring my thread up over the top of that copper wire. Wrap it down securely. And then just twist it off. Then I can just neaten this area up by uh, wrapping up over that copper wire with the thread and building up a mini head, if you will. And that looks fine to me. Again, that wire is larger than normally uh, what would normally be used on this fly. It should be a finer copper wire. And I'm going to use the, the green dubbing you just saw that I did the underbody with. Uh, to build up a little bit more of a green section on here. Again, this would be the body portion of the caddis worm sticking out of the caddis case. And I think I want that a little fatter, so I'll just add a little more dubbing. And with that done, again, I'll smooth up the area with a few thread wraps, and now we'll attach the CDC for the legs. And I've just taken a handful of CDC fibers, way more fibers than I need. I'm going to place them under the thread and then push up on them and fold the ends over the thread. So push up. I come in and just fold it over. Then I can just slide and let this ride right back up and come against the tie-in point. That's plenty to hold it in place. I'll roll this over so I can clean it up a little bit, spread it out so that I can see where my V is. Wrap right over the same spot. And I've got my legs on one side. I'll roll over to this other side. Uh, there is no back side to a rotary vice hook. Uh, if it's in there, all you have to do, if it's in a rotary vice, all you have to do is roll it over to get it to the front. It's one of my favorite features of a rotary vice. With all these extra legs in here, I'll make sure they're down on the side where they're supposed to be, and I'll cut off some of the biggest flyaway pieces. Stroke these to the rear and uh, fasten them down. And the only section of this fly left really is the head. Uh, you can see the, the uh, caddis case, the green portion of the body sticking out, and now we'll form a black head and this will be a complete fly. And then we'll trim some of those extra legs off. So I'll get some uh, uh, black dubbing. Uh, I hold the dubbing in my right hand, dub with my off hand, with uh, my left hand. Uh, makes it easier. You don't have to keep setting the dubbing down and picking it up. You can just reach down and get some more dubbing out of your right hand if you need extra. This is such a short section. I've got more than I need. Strip some of that away. And trim those off later. Clean that up a bit. Make sure I can see some body behind those wings, and I can. All right, I'll get my whip finish tool and tie this off. Trim away some more of those wings, and uh, or those legs, I mean, and I'll be all set. The 
really should only be uh, three to seven legs showing on each side of this. Uh, I have seen a picture of a couple that actually were tied by Rennie Harrop that had as many as nine, but he counts them. I have to admit I don't. <laughs> but uh, there it is. There's a case caddis larva tied using rotary fly tying techniques.